All right, so for this Low Star Legends video on Arash, I'm not going to do it in the traditional sense where we go over his hits, we go over his skills, and then we talk about his NP because there's actually really no point when going over Arash. Arash is like very different from a lot of like the other low star servants that we've been talking about because he kind of just serves one really good purpose and that's sort of like wave clearing, right? You don't really use him for anything else other than that. I mean, sure, you could do some memes where you're like, all right, Necromancy Arash, I'm going to have him fire his NP like 67 different times. And that can be funny, but that's not really what you use him for. He has like a very similar role to like Chen Gong where he allows you to, without using your plug suit, cycle through a bunch of your different other servants and it's been very, very useful. Now, even to this day with us having like arts farming, quick farming and buster farming coming up, this is actually still very useful and like some people kind of forget that they still have a rush when they're like, oh my goodness, there's this really weird node, how do I clear through it? And then they remember Arash is in their box and he comes to the rescue, blasts a node and allows you to cycle through your guys and basically gives you a free node clear. So if you were thinking that like, oh, well, just because like the arts meta and the quick meta are here, Arash is going to be dead. Absolutely not. You should still level up this guy because he's insanely useful to have for pretty much like just any weird node or any node that you just need a free clear on that farming node. But I'll explain what I mean after... I ask you guys to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel as I do upload content every single day and it would help me out more than you know. Also, I am going to be streaming every weekday at like 5 p.m. CST or 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Still not used to saying CST while I'm on vacation, but you know, that's when I'm going to be streaming. I'll give you guys both times. <laughs> And for those interested, I think we're finally going to do the waifu tier list on stream. And I imagine that's going to take us a couple of streams to get through. Because, you know, there's just kind of a few uh, anime waifus in FGO. You know, there's just, just a few of them. But yeah, we'll be doing that today and, you know, for the next couple of days over on stream. So I look forward to seeing you guys come out there, seeing my uh, completely based and 100% true objective opinions, right, going to be on stream. But yeah, let's go ahead and talk about Arash and why he's still useful. So... There's pretty much only two things you care about when you're talking about Arash. The first is his third skill, which is a 30% battery. You only really care about that because you're like, man, that's going to help me get to his NP faster. It combos with like his 20% of pen skill. So you can pair him with like any 50% uh, starting charge event CE. Or if you've got like a double Castoria setup where you're going to use him to clear one node and tag him out into another support. The double Castorias will give him 60% cumulative with their double charisma. The 30% will give him up to 90. And then if you've even just unlocked his append skill, that gets him to 100%, right? Very, very useful for just like a lot of very weird and random farming nodes where again, you just want Arash to like obliterate people. And speaking of obliterating people, that's when we actually get into his actual NP. His NP literally just says, like, deal damage to all enemy, overcharge, deal additional damage to them based on overcharge. Now, overcharge zero doesn't give him any additional damage. If you can find a way to get him to, like, overcharge two or something, the man is going to obliterate people because the damage starts to stack pretty quickly, going from 200% at overcharge two to 800% at overcharge five. So if there's, like, some event, NCE we get in the future that's like oh yeah starts you off at overcharge level 2 0% NP now you know that not only can you get to 100% but that overcharge level actually is going to help him as well because it's going to give him way more damage and that's pretty much all that's important about Arash aside from the fact that his NP is going to cause him to game end himself and shuffle him back into the deck well not shuffle him back in but you know what I mean he's going to tag out for somebody else the reason this is so important is that there's a lot of nodes that you simply just can't like try to just ram your head into it and try to quick or arts farm it, right? Because if you have a node where it's like a 113 node, you might not have the actual like art servant that's capable of like looping through it, or you might not have the gongster, right? And enough supports to cycle through to actually consistently get him to 100% of his NP. And that's where people like Arash come in because Arash's NP just does incredible amounts of damage like almost ludicrously so for him being a one-star servant, right? And that's the reason you see a lot of people actually go out of their way to actually grail their Arash because A, not only is he the GOAT and he helps a lot of people out, especially in the early game, one of my earliest setups in FGO when I was playing NA on like year one was Arash for every wave one, Lancelot for every wave two, and then Gilgamesh for every wave three. That was pretty much like my entire setup for everything and it worked out pretty well. 
because the nice thing is that I would always have my Gilgamesh with a 50% starting charge CE, his battery was 30%, Arash would tag out for Merlin, get that extra 20% and that extra buster buff to guarantee that with any crits and his NP, Gilgamesh would wipe any wave 3. It's why Arash is so good, even for like newer accounts, but even for those more old accounts, right, that you've been playing for a while, you can have Arash just give you a freebie by taking out one of the nodes, right? Because if they are like a Saber or a Berserker, this guy's gonna absolutely obliterate them. If they're a Rider, he has an append skill to give him bonus damage against them. If you want to invest in that, it does really good wonders for him. But even then, a lot of like these neutral like nodes, he can actually sometimes clear their first wave, right? Especially if you've got him grailed and such, just because he's capable of doing so much damage and that's what kind of makes him the GOAT. He's even kind of good in certain challenge quests, right? Because there's certain challenge quests where he can kind of like dunk on a boss and some of their goons, if they're like a saber or a berserker, kind of give you some free damage, take out some of the goons, tag out for another buffer, and then, you know, he may have even like broken the break bar for you. Now, sometimes it's a lot to expect him to do that much damage. But again, depending on how much you put into Arash is how much you're going to get back. You level him up, you do his, like, his NP skill, you get that to maxed out, that opens you up a lot, like I said, because that plus, say, like a double Castoria is going to get him up to 90%. And then whether you got a starting charge CE or you even just put a little bit into his append skill means that now Arash with double Castoria can get 100% of his NP blow up the first node and then tag out for another buffer your dps whoever you want him to tag out for it doesn't really matter right he's kind of insane and if you're asking well like how would you do the double castoria if he's already going to tag out you would plug seed out the castoria obviously and this would kind of allow you to take advantage of like throwing a waiver in there for free it kind of gives you double plug suit and that's just the value of arash and why you should level him up the ability for a servant to just kind of like freely tag people out is insane it's why people lost their minds when chen gong was announced because chen gong does the same thing you know he like blasts the enemy takes out the support that's already used all of their buffs and tags them out for a new one and he just does that continually right arash is just like that but he's just meant to take out one node with a massive amount of damage so honestly i didn't think i was gonna like structure this video in a traditional like oh why you should level arash i was just like i could just give you the various reasons of why this guy is good no matter if you're a newer player and you just need help clearing story because this guy can just nuke a bunch of like nodes and like early story and even some bosses to just give you some free damage and even for like these random like whack nodes that we're getting it's like oh the first node is like some 100k saber i mean if you got a good arash that boy's gonna nuke that guy into the ground and even if you don't got a good arash maybe you got him bronzed that dude's np plus like some of your like main dps's attacks are probably going to destroy that enemy because that man's gonna probably hit him for like 70k of their like total 100k hp he does insane damage is all i'm getting across right he just does ridiculous damage and is very useful for a lot of these weird nodes but I'm sure I don't have to tell you that. I'm sure everybody in the comments are going to be like, yeah, Arash carried me through this farming node. Or I didn't think Arash was going to be able to clear these 40k archers. But no, he just blew them up and made my life a lot easier. The dude is just absolutely insane, right? Firing him with like no buffs, you know, you might be like, oh, he didn't have any buffs against these neutral enemies. He looked a little dull. But again, imagine you just give him those two Artoria Charismas, right? You just give him that extra 40% attack and that guy will take that and he will run a mile with it. So bottom line, level up your Arash. He's a very good boy. You have a very good way to tell about how much someone has played FGO depending on what their bond level is of their Arash. In fact, if you're someone that doesn't have your Arash leveled, I want you to specifically sound off in the comments down below and tell me what are you doing? Why have you not leveled up your Arash? Because I'm sure this entire like what 9-10 minute video of me just talking and rambling about why this guy is so good plus everybody in the comments plus everybody you'll see in like stream and in the discord should convince you that this guy is worth it no matter what you're running. You got all quick servants and Scotty doesn't matter. Arash is going to be there to clear out those random whack nodes that are giving your quick servants trouble. Man, I had to cut there while I was on a roll talking about Arash because somebody started flying an airplane above my location right now. I'm like, dude, I'm on vacation. I got to deal with this. But anyway, yeah, if you have not been convinced, I don't know what to tell you, man. This guy is like absolutely great. Sure, you could be like, well, he doesn't have any other uses. All the skills don't do it. It doesn't matter. What he does specifically is so good. 
doesn't matter that his other two skills are basically dead. But you know what? Let me know in the comments down below. Am I gassing up Arash too much? If you haven't leveled up Arash, I want to see you specifically so I can be like, Hey, go level up your Arash, man. He's a one-star servant, bro. He's so easy to level up. And you only got to max out one of his skills, that being his third skill, and maybe a lock via pen skill if you want to get him to like 100% in like double Castoria scenarios. But yeah, let me know all that in the comments down below. Leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.